So the week before, so I've been away for two weeks in a row. The week before, I was at uh, something called Link, uh, which is a, an organization for girls who lost their mommy or daddy. And one of my very dear old friends, a cover of mine from Curl, something called Rabbi Angel, which I is an angel, he was a Manish Big Sadiq. Since the Petiro of the Manchester Roshiva, if I was in Manchester and wanted a brothel, he's the guy I would go to. Very special fan. And uh, we were driving along, because uh, I took him to Muncie, and I had to go to Muncie to do something, and I took him on Friday morning. Um, from, we were in Westchester, so it was only about a half an hour drive. I was driving up there, and the way back he said something interesting. I was telling him about the difference, because he's not used to America, the difference between America and the UK when it comes to driving. <laughs> Which is really quite considerable, and you, you'll know this. But I mean, he, he, I said first of all, I made the big mistake when I first moved here driving like, like a British person, which does, simply doesn't work, uh, because if you signal, you're telling people what you'd like to do, they're going to make sure you can do. Um, if you are trying to be nice and you're flashing some guy because it, it's nighttime and he hasn't switched on his lights, have you tried this? Yeah. Nobody pays the slightest attention. They never ever did. In fact, I did this recently, and uh, I was about five miles from flashing by and hulking the guy. He's, it's dangerous, there's a black car, you know. I pulled up beside him, and he's got like this, and I said, Your lights are up there. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, and it, that doesn't work. Um, and and if, you don't, if you don't speed and break the speed limit, you're dangerous. Cause every, you know, and, and he said something interesting. He said, and it, Because he's your son, I said, I've been driving 40 something years. I don't think I've ever honked once. <laughs> and in his case, I can. <laughs> in, his, in, his, in, his case, <laughs> in his case, I can believe it because he really, really is insulting. Okay. So the Indian tonight, if you remember, it's what I'm going to do last week because I didn't really take off the share last week. So it's called The Puzzling Canvas of Tzaddikim. The Puzzling Canvas of Tzaddikim. So that's what we tried to get last year. Um, this is safer. And the safe is called Mimer Vyech Yosef. Yes, of crime. Uh, come back to that shortly. But here's how the Sefer begins. It was written by a very, very great tzaddik, um, one of the Lamed of Tzaddikim, according to my Rosh Yeshiva, somebody called Blit, where it blades of freedom. And it says like this Manal he Yeshivas, this is how it begins. Manal he Yeshivas, Kashegil Adover Paparshia Sefer. When they come to the speak, the Dabir Paparshia Sefer, about these Parshias, Yes, of Yehuda, etc. Hoi Makdimin Toma, they always begin with saying, well, I think Russians go, In on a Madabri Mehem. We're not talking about Yosef and the brothers and the pain of Yaakov <coughs> and Tomer and Yudah and all that sort of stuff. Ana medabrim atzmeinu. We're talking about ourselves. Le atzmeinu, ben le atzmeinu, and to ourselves. Behishtamish ben mamari hazal, ben mamdim lono arachas kain. When we're looking at mamari hazal, it's teaching us our how to live our lives. Matim ana maskirim shemayis ein kavana lehem el lono. And if we're talking about them, really our kavona is about ourselves. About ourselves. Um, so, Bikitsu. Um, the idea of not losing your temper when you're driving is probably quite a good idea. And it's particularly in New York, or and certainly in California, and you probably know, and there's videos going around about this, you know, there's, there's people who literally get into such a road rage and they pull up alongside people and shoot them. So I think it's a good idea not to. You see, you never know what you say, how somebody is going to react to how you, what you say. I remember once in Manchester, in England, I was giving a share, I'm sure I told you this, um, for a very, very dear friend of mine. There was an audience of traditional Jews, not necessarily religious Jews, and I was talking about the, the, the Indian of the Isha Sifaz Torah, the beautiful woman that the Jewish soldier takes in battle. And I pointed out that uh, the procedures that I have to go through, of course, she has to be taken to your house and you have to take off her beautiful clothes which is very similar to Shmata. and the fingernails grow and therefore they're all icky and, and dark and get stuff underneath them and of course she has to cut off her hair and so I went into a little bit about how as Chazal say that Hashem Yisborach, whatever this means made a Chava's hair beautiful before she took her to to Odom, before he took her to Odom I should say and, um, and how hair is a woman's crown and glory now afterwards, and I didn't realize there was a frisson, as they say, there was a little electrical charge through the room. I had no way of knowing that the lady sitting correct, directly in front of me had just finished chemotherapy and was wearing a wig. Um, however, uh, it was interesting that she thought it was very funny, um, you know, which was, oh, but you know, obviously words can be extremely dangerous. 
I, and I had a phone call from a, a lady who I'd met at an organization for divorcees who was thinking of getting remarried. So she phoned me up for my advice because the person she wants to remarry, um, she's an FFB from, from Brooklyn, and she wants somebody to suggest it about you. Um, and she kept, <laughs> she kept referring to him. I don't know if I should marry one of them. Um, <laughs> this, was, this was not them. And what will people say if I get my kids out of school? And, and this, is, this lady is 33, by the way. Um, at least that's what she says. Uh, this lady is 33. She's been divorced. Uh, so I said to her, look, Plinus, let's call her Plinus. Uh, I said, Plinus, um, you have to realize that if you're 32 or 33, um, then the sort of guy you're going to be marrying is somebody who's going to be 37 or 38 or so 40. That's, you know, generally the way of the world. Um, and everybody comes with baggage. So you've got, if it's a divorcee, you've got to find out why is he divorced. If he's never been married, then why is he never married? Um, but, you know, the fact, if the only concern is that the fellow's about true, who'd been friends for three years and goes to Shear and that be yummy and stuff like that. And she'd already done the job. What, what's your problem? I said, yeah, but, you know, can you speak to him and maybe tell him, you know, I, you know I'm worried about the bunch of what they have them and then and Baltrim. So I said to her, don't you know the Gomorrah and, and Bowman C and Daphne and Ches? So, of course, she didn't. Because she'd been, apart, <laughs> I can tell this, but she'd been talking to about him about being a Baltrim, uh, which is very tactful. And, okay. and, and maybe I figured out why she's divorced. Anyway, anyway, so it's a, so the Mishra says to him, just like there's a noz uh, when it comes to Mecca and business, when you can do stuff, we, we've learned this together in the past. There's also a noz, also, how would you translate a noz? I can't really think of a good English word for this. Mm-hmm. Painting, that's a good word, that's very good. Painting somebody uh, with the way you speak. Uh, don't say to somebody, a salesman in the store, how much this costs, you've got no intentions of buying it because you get the guy's hopes up, he's going to get his commission, that's never going to happen, one thing. Uh, if the person is a Baal it's not like you're a Baal Shuba. wow, what does bacon taste like? Wow. Uh, and if he's a Ben Gerim, interesting, the Marshal, I was always interested in the, in the Losh and the Mishnah, they don't say if he's a Gerim. So the Marshal says, Ken Zayim, perhaps, it is, that he's that would be a Shvach, the Gerim. Although my Talmud in Magyar Mahal say you don't tell anybody you're there. Anyway, because they're likely to be upset. Anyway, lo yom alo yitzchus ma'asecha ma'asecha. I don't like the Sefer Pinkos. Ah, Yisra, yeah. You say that he used to fatten cows of Hodes or or what's it like to the Pope and his father. That sort of stuff. So you're not allowed to say such things. She said, but I think it's a wonderful thing. But, you know, I think his story is very interesting. I said, yeah, but does he feel that? Does he feel that? Interestingly, by the way, uh, my dear friend, my dear friend Rabbi, Rabbi Gottlieb, who is open about being a Baal I've been going to mention it myself, um, he, uh, his wife's in hospital with a heart attack and a stroke. Um, so this, she should be in the school, so she should have a refer to Um But I asked him once, he, he was here, he was saying a share for a rabbi in his yeshiva, and he was talking about being a Baal Shuvah, and I said to him afterwards, what do you do with this mission? What do you do with the mission? Well, he didn't, he, 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 you know, he's, he's a huge Tom McLaughlin, so he, he, he'd answer for me. But uh, certainly you've got to be very careful. So she said, I think it's wonderful. I said, yeah, but does he think it's wonderful? Well, it's okay that you think it's wonderful to be a Baltruva, a Gera, or somebody who's, you know, who's, who's a real Baltruva, but was from and off and comes back again. But maybe they won't, and maybe it'd be like embarrassing the, the bald woman. Fine. Ramatisil Solomon, also Zosayim for Shalima. He quotes here a very interesting um, uh, mimer. This is in his um, Memches, uh, two volumes in Kinyon and the Memches, uh, Kinyon and the Torah, and Nicholas for him. And here in, in Kinyon Lam and Gimel, is a Havas of Techol, how you should uh, want to and welcome criticism. But remember, the Gemara says nobody knows how to do it anymore, and nobody knows how to accept it anymore. And we get hurt when people criticize us, even if they mean it um, for our Torah. I tell you when I gave the, the Sheer in Williamsburg, the guy wanted to give me a criticism afterwards. It's very, very appropriate saying I just speaking in Kiev Thuni. Um, so when I was I went to speak once in Williamsburg as a fundraiser for a special needs school, but the summer is very big in that sort of thing. Um, so I met rendezvous with the guy who was my host, 
and he found there was a parking garage nearby, so he took the parking garage and we walked together to a building in the corner, which if I remember right, they said International Finance Center. And it was, you know, all glass windows. It looked as though it's, you know, it's like Wall Street. <coughs> Super duper, you know, smart, shiny computers, etc. I went upstairs, and upstairs, I was about 100 to go see them. And there was a boy, a special needs boy, and he gave a little talk, and I had to give a talk as well. So looking at my camera there, um, and I, when I teach public speaking, which as you know I do, I always say check the room, and check, know who you're speaking to. Okay? Don't make jokes about Zionism, you're speaking to Israelis, and don't make jokes about, you know, and um, Lucia could be talking to Babbage. You know, people get sensitive, they don't talk about bald women when you're talking to someone with cancer, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I realized, of course, this is, not, this is a, a pre oilam a Hasidic oilam. So I spoke mostly in Yiddish. So walking back to the car, he said to me, do you mind if I give, do you, mind if I give you some constructive criticism? I said, no. He said, you, you probably don't get too much constructive criticism. No, I don't mind. He said, um, well, him pausing and he was fresh filling up and working out how can I say this uh, hurting his feelings and so rather let's see our beards are longer than your beard and our pants are longer than your pants and our Yiddish is better than your Yiddish they came to hear an English gentleman speaking and they were a bit disappointed that I was speaking in Yiddish I said it was probably not such a good Yiddish anyway my late mother-in-law Shalom used to say Yehudi Yoyin do red Yiddish for your Turk. You speak Yiddish like a Turk. Why a Turk? I don't know. She spoke, she spoke perfect uh, Latish Yiddish. Anyway, um, good. So he quotes from Simcha Zisla, the Kamal Mekamim. So it says in many, many places, Varki Toichal Kvonu Lahini Raya Achiyovin Biyakir Kidera Kashu Golok Bo Tosa. The whole idea of Toichal is to bring proofs to somebody that what you're doing, how you're approaching whatever the issue is, is you're, you're on the wrong there. You can make a mistake. But Emma Su, and the truth is, apart from what you it's different. And the whole idea of and the more you're able to bring proofs, it's not shouting at you, you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid. It's saying, you know, and this doesn't work, and that's why. And it's different. Tachachachah is not saying a hundred times the same thing. That's a mother in law. A Tachachachah is saying, you know, and this right and another right to pro- show the guys on the wrong path. already brought, he says, from my Rebbe, what he says in the Sefer Levelion. when he talks about Litzonus. Omar Chazal. Litzonus, Achaz, Doich, Chazal, we already know, Chazal already tells that one joke can destroy a hundred words of, well, now we're learning, saying a hundred riots. So these are rise. I can prove to you what you know what your the derek you're on is the inappropriate derek. But one joke and it's all gone. <laughs> Vanish. Zelashon. Kinia Yotzar Horin, because the Pasak says, Ki Yotzar Horin, Ubaru, Hashem created mountains. Ubaru and he created winds, which of course can be hurricanes and all that sort of stuff. Umagil Oda Masikli. Umagil Oda Masikli, and he gives a person the ability to speak. He says, This shows you the incredible strength, the incredible power that a person is given through the ability to speak. Because what is speech? Speech is the ability to communicate one to the other. With that, because there's a, there's a thing here, he created, Hashem created the mountains, and he created huge winds, and then speech. That's, that's the most powerful of all. You can, with speech, you can do any. You can break mountains, break rocks into. The bediber echad with one word, belatzonus achas with one joke, yochol lo odom lahachriv odom lemaloi. It's it's possible for a person to destroy the entire world. Seems a bit dramatic. Odom is slats as ina roy b'zei shun dober me miyochad. Does that strike you as a bit of a, an exaggeration? Hyperbole is the English word. Well, don't forget that when the Americans, <laughs> sorry, when we. <laughs> Bomb Nagasaki in Hiroshima. Uh, do you know why we did that? So historically, it was interesting. They, they, they sent a letter to the Tokyo government, um, the government of Tokyo, saying that, uh, asking for the surrender, and they replied. And when it was tr- translated, it was mistranslated. They meant to say we will consider this, but the the way it was translated and handed to the president was basically get lost. 
of his mistrial. It wasn't. It wasn't. It doesn't seem to have been malicious. It was just that they, they translated their own words. They saw it as a refusal. They weren't going to do it, and that's why they dropped the atom bombs. So what a word that can destroy the world. It will certainly destroy a big chunk of the world. Two major cities just vaporized in a second. So it's a serious thing. How we speak is a, is a, is a big thing. Now you all remember the Gemara in Shabbos. Um, the Gemara in Shabbos says uh, the famous story, and I mean this bit of Gemara is it's Gemara Lamed Aleph Lamed Aleph, famous famous Gemara. About the two fellows, Tanur Rabbanon, Loy Adam and Vosan Kehil, a person should always have uh, be uh, have a, be an honor of the Kehil, but Loy Captain Kishamai, and not a captain. How do you try to say captain? Grumpy, uh, ang- <laughs> I can't grump. Grumpy, um, angry. It could be angry. Um, certainly, that's the story that comes next when the three Gerim come to Hill and Shammai looking for Gerus. Right, Hill welcomes them, and Shammai has to have a stick with them. Boom. Well, I said, that's a book road. But before we get to that, there's a two bini odom. Shahar Mazet is Amra Kol Nishi Yelach Liyakne. It's Hill. Any being going to provoke Hill, then the, he's going to he's going to get a tremendous a tremendous uh, amount of money. Uh, 400 zoos, so that was a, a big thing. So the god Lador, and of course everybody knows the story here, it's a famous Kamori, he was away since Friday afternoon until he's in the bath. How the guy knows he's in the bath, and he shampooed his hair, oh, so the Hasidic should not have any hair, but you get the idea. But anyway, whatever he's in the bath, it's, it's inconvenient. And the fellow comes along. I'll pass back slave, Omar Mikan, Hilo Mikan Hilo, and he says, and again, very unusual, right? Where's Hilo, where's Hilo? Raf Hilo. Haraf Hagon, Hagon Lador Hilo. Now, where's Hilo? Where's Hilo? The south of the Yotzakrotz, I see, he wraps himself in a, a bath towel. Amalo Bani, my father, my son, and my Atom Babak, how can I help you? On the Shana Yishli the Shaba. Big Shana, big Shana. On the Shopney, ask Shopney, Ma Rosh Shop of Loim Sigma Bonus. Why did the Egyptians have. No, sorry, the Babylonians. Why did the Babylonians have big round heads? Right? Amalo Bani, Shana Kadan Shana. Very deep question. It's a very deep question. But he says, because they're, they're, um, they're midwives and not um, expert at uh, uh, delivering babies, and that causes the, the heads to be wrapped when they're delivered. Fine. Okay. Waited an hour. I'm, sure, I'm not sure it's literally an hour. Waited until he was back in the bath. Um, he comes back and says, he gets himself out, and he comes, and he says, so how can I help you, my son? Do you know? Do you know people like this? Leaving aside, <laughs> leaving aside mothers and law. Do, do you know people like this? I, I know people. Charlie like usually. Oh, yeah. Another yes, yes. We all know people like this. Uh, I've got quite a oh, big question. Yes, ask. He says, "What? What can I do?" My name is Shal Tamidoyim, uh, Tarutois. Why are the eyes of the Tamidoyim narrow? Well, of course, it famously said because it's, they live in sandy places and the sand goes in their eyes. So I waste these in the back of the bath again, and uh, and then he comes and he says to him. Uh, we can heal, we can heal, and he comes out again. He says the fellow, ah, my friend, how can I help you, my son? For me, it would be, ah. Um, anyway, so I'm, I'm more shamai than heal. Um, and don't forget, things are sheen like Scottish. Anyway, so Bikitsa, sir. Um, I'm not sure if Scottish is a sheen, is it a sheen or a sheen? Is it a sheen? No, it's a sheen, okay. Okay, um, that's my scene. Anyway, so basically, um, I've got to stop these jokes, they're really bad. Anyway, so the kids say, so okay, why do Africans have big feet? Oh, they live in swampy places, etc., etc. And um, and then, of course, the guy loses his temper. He just lost me for him. So, was, what are you talking about? He says, you know, he tells him about the, the, the bet. If only, you know, if I'd, if I'd got you to lose your temper, um, then, you know, I would have wanted this. And he says, famously, you should lose 400 follower, much, much more money. But Kaz was showing that he should have released the temper. That's, that's the good more. Now, there's a ton to say here, and um, we don't have time in our short yet. The Marsha is very interesting because he says that, uh, that Hill's nature, because it starts off by saying he's an on off, was that he saw in these questions Torah. He didn't see, because these are crazy, stupid questions. You know, go away. I'm the god of Ladar. Um, I was just speaking to Abbott about getting somebody in to see Rav Chaim. It's not easy to get to see the god of Ladar. <laughs> if, and, you know, if, if you got the message back that my, the person that tried to get in went to see Rav Chaim, and he went to say, you know, um, 
Why do black people have frizzy hair? Get out of here! That was ridiculous. Um, you drive me nuts. Um, they, 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 don't, they, they, don't, they don't have time for such fresh and Irish kite, but he's uh, it's all the time, it's all the Irish. It was, he didn't see it as an Irish kite, his mandrake was such that he saw it uh, as being um, a, a serious type of question. He saw references, but not time to work it through it, he did it in the Marshal, to something serious in each of them, and he replied accordingly. That's that was it. Same thing that he asked him, between the whole thing and one foot. It's just a stupid question. What yeah, he is it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's got yeah, all threats, and, the, and that's the famous, so there's three bearing. So the first one says he, he wants to, he wants to touch that, but not the touch of all pen, that's the next bit of the Gemara. And again, one says, of course, Shami says, get lost. Why well, didn't he get lost? Actually, well, actually, hit him with a stick, so it's more or less saying the get lost. And he looks at him, well, that's fine, okay. And of course, the famous thing is what he does is he teaches them the alphabet, and then they teach them the next day, he teaches different letters, and, or gives them different values. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, oh, so what? What was going on? You know, so you do need a teacher. Yeah. That's the Torah spell pen. Yeah, we all know this there, etc., etc. I love the one who wants to be the kind of goggle. You see, he, he, that's, that's my favorite. I mean, you know, and he, oh, yeah, fine, we'll get in there. He's macabre and stuff. And they end up, these Garens get together, apparently the National Conference of Garen, and uh, they got together and said, oh, 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 oh fantastic, he loves that. Should always be in. This is the, the, the sikum of the whole series of what it starts off with. You should always be an honor of the Hilo and never a captain like Shama, because Shama brought them in, because Hilo brought them in. Well, well, that's the story. Yeah, <coughs> that's what I've always understood this to be. Um, but it was really, and it, I, I, I found something uh, just recently, which uh, Michael Wurzel said, but we were so, I was talking about. There's a safer, um, and it's, it's called Leib Mordechai. Um, I can't remember the name for it. I think it's Mordechai. got in my head. He was a Talmud of Kolos Khan. He, he lived in Eretz Hashem. He was Nifter in 92. And in fact, it's a great tzaddik. I've, or, I've ordered the safer. It's a very, very interesting safer. Um, and so he sent me this, and I thought it was fantastic. Um, everybody knows that Yaakov Avina works for a ton of years in order to marry Rocco. And then, of course, he wakes up, as it says, and it's late. What's his reaction? Now, in this, you can clearly say that Yaakov was not Scottish. What did he say? What would you say? Seven years work! Then somebody swaps the... <laughs> Imagine you go to your home and somebody else there. Hello, who are you? Right. Um, but of course, that you could back out the chuppah. You can't. It's a bit more difficult to back out the night after. Right. Who are you? Of course, it's Leah. So he goes to Lavan and he says, "What are you doing to me?" And but what did he say? Lavan, I'm sorry. Why did you cheat me? And he said, "Well, it's not our, it's not our minhag to give the you know the the, the, the youngest one a chuppah. Oldest one, and if you want to work on that seven years." Well, this is what the Lid Mordechai says. This is very, very interesting. The Yaakov bin Allah Shalom has a talk with Halal Lahamid Yud Be Shvatim Merachal Imai. So he knew that he, and he wanted to um, create the, the Shvatim from Rochal. Because of the Svarim Ki Elam, I didn't know this, this is interesting. That's why I wanted to get hold of the Sefer and wanted to try and dig this one. Because of the Svarim Ki Elam, how you came, had he had. Only Rockel. So if the, if the cheating hadn't happened, and he married Rockel and had the 12 Shvatim just from Rockel, well, it's a Bria Magia Latikin Hashana, then the world would have reached Shlemus immediately. There would have been no long Golas. There would have been no Chorim Bashri, Shikhan It would have been perfect times, Mashiach Fight, and as it were, right then. Lohi Makir says, Lohi Makir says, the Shiva Misraim, the Kola Golis, and none other Golis. Very interesting idea. No exiles. No Ashton. Because Zeus, Havlig, Velo, Shorak, Lama, Ramsani. But he's strengthened himself. And he says, Why did you shoot me? Now, I have to say, a big problem, you know me, um, I'm just a very, very mundane Jew, and I'm afraid of being Scottish. That was one of, one of the boys in Yeshiva, and I teach him yesterday, find out to his cost, um, when he did something that annoyed me and that needed, and this was right, <laughs> what this boy did was wrong, and what this fellow did was wrong. So you got right on your side, and it said, boom, 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 I said to the boy. And he says, well, why did you cheat me? And he just gives the answer. Listen to what he says. Follow you, sir. Lama Rizani, follow you, sir. And no more, not one more word. Behind a key. Ilimolo haya koyas haya kilko odios godl. And that is, if it were to be the case that he lost his temper, listen to this, then it would have been the damage that would have been done, would have been done, or could have been done through Yaakov losing his temper, was worse than came out 
as a, for the consequences of not marrying Rock and having all those children. But that, the world would have been perfected straight away. The, uh, and then we had to go through Golas 1 and Golas 2 and the, the Babylonian and the, the Persians and, and eventually Auschwitz. But the danger of Yaakov losing his temper could have produced worse results for the world and for Kalal Yisrael than that. Boom! I was blown away by this. So it seems to be that, that I, I think you could say the exact same thing with Hale. Oh, like, he was, he was attacked. What did, when he turned around and says to him, it's better you lose the, all this money in a million pounds or dollars or whatever it is, and for me not to lose my time. I just thought he was expressing, you know, because I'm about Musser, I'm about Midas. No, no, no. I think from this he's saying something far more profound and something deeper. The consequences of the God of Lador losing his temper could be horrendous, could be absolutely dreadful. Yeah. Sorry? Oh, 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 okay. Why? So in the... Oh, I've lost my mind. So when I was learning that, I had, uh, I had a memory of uh, something that uh, um Levitt says in Sickles Musa from a long time ago. Unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't bring all my swearing from England to America. But, and I was being... And, and of course, the, the newer versions are much nicer. Right? And the, if you remember the original Sequels Musa, it was very hard. The print was terrible, and, blah, blah, and it was in three sections. But now they've tidied it up, etc. Which is much nicer to uh, to read from. But I've, you know, I lost thirty years' notes or whatever, you know, and I go as and cross references, etc. Which is a bit frustrating. But anyway, Baruch Hashem, I found what I was looking for for tonight. Shem. So he, he wants to know he, he, the starting of the point. He's focusing on the point of Moshe Rabbeinu going up to Har Sinai and then the miscalculation and. Uh, Consequence of that of making the Iglus of, etc., etc. Fine. I'll read a little bit to you. Kangilon and Chazal, Kate said, Nisho Yisrael, Kate the Egel. So that miscalculation, that assuming that he was going to be back a day, a, a day uh, earlier than he meant to come back, was le- what led to the Iglus of. That's a big, that's Aleph based, that's one on one Judaism. Fine. Ki Nisho, she Yotzim and Israim ad Ata, Hoyo Moshe Rabbeinu Hoyelok of Nem. Now, from the moment they left Egypt, their leader, the one they completely trusted, that's Moshe Rabbeinu. Mani Gomorrah Lehem is a Derek Yilkubo. He guided and led their lives. That's a Maisa Sher Yasu. What did you do? I mean, in the past, at least they said, Mara Lehem and Sultan, and then suddenly the Sultan shows them, whatever that means, um, uh, that Moshe Rabbeinu is made, so they see uh, a vision, and they all get some sort of prophecy, of his story, say that the attacker was prophecy, but it was false prophecy, but they saw a picture of Moshe Rabbeinu dead, and it's also per- uh, Perex Ba'avir and his beer, B I E R, his funeral um, coffin, sort of thing, flying up to heaven. By calling Israel Shuru and Bapak and Bahola, and the whole Jewish people panicked and, and lost it. Lost it. Lenegh and Nehem Choshev Afela Adar Rafa, and they saw, they were blinded. They all saw was darkness. I call it Oilam Kulo, Nasim Babuvi, and the whole world was in one big Abuvi, one confusion. and and panic, and I'm trying to think of pro- appropriate words, um, hysteria, maybe. But Roisin Kach, Ewood is Ashrasehen, Bohoyo Shoibrim, the Ritzosim, and Momot Barat Merman. And then they just completely lost it completely, we would say in American Sprach. Adon Kalon Nevi'im, the greatest of all the Nevi'im. Shushurim, Paka, me, Yurl, Hemda, who's going to teach us now what to do? And with Honim, Lamara, Barbubi, Bechoshek, and in this darkness, the Matsuv Zu. Yochel who are sought in lepoil, mashe in the other lepoil, the matzav rov. But when a person loses it, when Klal Yisrael lose it, or a person loses it, loses focus, loses calm, and yeshiva dance, and calculating, because you're on the move on the oil and eitzos, and then you lose eitzos, the way to go in your life. But the other who make a darling oil. And even if you're one of the greatest of, of, of Israel, the Mipa Shui Dardea, at the time of the Mipa, when there's a Dardea, Nosan Huba Sakana Gadol and Fiopa by Igra Rama Labriat Mikasan, a person who falls into the lowest. And therefore, as a consequence, after you're the God of Ladur, then the advice that you're going to give to the people is going to lead them completely astray. As a consequence, that you have lost it. Claude Israel lost it. And then, boom! What the Sultan was able to, to uh, accomplish when a person loses it. A very very huge thing. I remember. Um, well, first of all, just remind ourselves where it says in Pinky Ovos. Interestingly, by the way, just to 
add to what you're saying. The, 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 the safer I quoted before, uh, this little black safer here, it's not even got a name on it. This is where Lynn Freeman wrote two songs, or maybe more, that's the only one I saw. So this one's called Shal Bechir Hashem. It's about people thinking Shal Melech as being, as it were, the bad guy in the story. He says, not at all. You don't get to be chosen to be the king of, of Klal Yisrael unless you were one of the Godoyli, the historia show show Klal Yisrael. Um, go. And this one was the one I was quoting here. It's very interesting when uh, I think I've told you about Rebbe Leib Friedman before. When Rebbe Leib Friedman arrived in Gates of Yeshiva, and this is a incredible story. When Rebbe Leib Friedman arrived in Gates of Yeshiva, I do not know how he got into the country. He's a tiny little fellow, but he was dressed like a tramp. Do you remember, and you're all too young, do you remember platform shoes that hippies used to wear or during the, the 80s and the 90s? The sole was about that, and then. Oh, you had a pair of no. right. Anyway, so what he did, he was wearing these brown platform shoes. And I can't remember the rest of his clothes, but he did. He looked like a, like a tramp, like a, like a hobo. And how, so how he got through the, the, you know, the immigration, I don't know. He ended up in Gates of Yeshiva. And he had the daughter who had to get married off, and so he came to life in Gates of Yeshiva. And he was mummish daven, I used to discuss the daven at the front next to the Today's Rosh Hashim Rebbe Ravon Gurbitz, uh, who's just come out of hospital, so it's all the better for Shlema. And, and they, they, they sat him next to me for some reason, or I just sat in the place. Uh, it was very interesting. There was a transformation next couple of days because um, whatever Shmaka jacket he was wearing, which would be you know, totally inappropriate color and everything, suddenly one of them gave him a frat coat, and then a new pair of pants, and then a white shirt. I, think with a, I, remember the, I remember the shirt with a big, long, silly collar that they had, but the, somebody had given him this thing. And it was a hat, and it suddenly he was transformed into a rock. My two Rosh Hashim, Reb Leib Latian and Reb Leib Gurbitz said, if, if they, I mean, they were Litvites, so they would say, it was on Lana Bob Siddiqui, they said, if any of you in the door is on Lana Bob Siddiqui, Reb Leib was. So he collected the money and off he went. And then he came back a second time, and I've never seen this, I've never heard about this in any other yeshiva, and I never, I never saw it, but we were all sitting, sitting in the Cheder Ocho, um, and in came Reb Avram Gurbitz, and he gave a, a bang on the table, and everybody looked up, and we had a complete silence, and he said, Reb Leib has said that being in Chutz Laoritz is affecting his avoider. We are being the battle in the base of Medrash. You all have to go and collect to get the money so we can go back to Eretz Yisrael tomorrow, or within the next 24 hours. And I went to Glasgow, which is hardly, well, it's my hometown, obviously, but hardly known for its, its giving of money to uh, Haredi causes, and I don't know how, but I, I collected two thousand pounds, which was a vast amount of money in those days. And everybody else was successful and just poke. And off he went. But the the disturbed avoider of one of the Lamed Bob Siddiquim of one of the greatest of the generation, the consequences that could have. I mean, have you ever heard of this? Gates is a pretty serious place, right? This is um, it. It's it's a, a mitzvah which uh, and Rabbi Rom would have done this himself. This must have gone to in those days. I think the stipend. You know, somebody very, that if for Labes, a void is being disturbed, then the void of Tom Shaw is in danger. Really incredible. And you look at this a little bit, actually, it's obvious a little swearing, but you think, oh, well, what he was really like, just in the same way you would never know that there was a tzaddik there, but what, even when he's dressed as a rock, the level of tzaddik, you can't know that either. Look, as as Reb Leib Friedman said, he say for when we're learning with these things, it's not it's not about them, it's not about we're learning the helo, we're not learning, we're learning about ourselves as well. So let me just quickly finish by, uh, I I think I told you once, I, I recently in the last six months or so, I get, decided to give myself a minhag, which I don't normally do, and it's to read the Igarus Rambam. The Igarus Rambam every month of Shabbos after Abdullah, I read this. Well, just remember what he says here. Shema beni Musar I'll teach us to teach us to turn back. Tomid l'dabar kol dvarecho v'nachos kol odom v'kol eish. You should always. It should always be the case that you speak quietly and gently and calmly. Snag tomid l'dabar kol dvarecho v'nachos v'kol 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 odom v'kol eish. Or b'zeti natsim in the castle because that will protect you from losing your temper. She mido rola hakti bini odom. And losing your temper, the words that can provoke you to lose your temper, mikan hilo, mikan hilo, or, you know, um, um, I'm terribly sorry, it's, uh, that's the way we do it around here, and you get the, the oldest daughter first. You can only say this about everyone, sorry. 
because losing your temper, getting angry, that is the meter roll that's guaranteed to make a person fall flat in their faith. Okay, no more percent is I'll call a koyas, call mini, gehenna, and shalting boy. And if you lose your temper, then all the gates, all the gates of various hells are open to you. Possibly proves that we're talking about that. And if you can get rid of cash, and you come to Midas and Nova, which is the Gemara just said, is a Midas we should always strive for. Everything flows from not losing your temper. And that's something when you're driving in New York roads, which is some, sometimes a challenge. And when you have a mother in law, it's sometimes a challenge. Apple Pekin, it's something to work on because the consequences of losing focus can be a disaster for Clavis Shell. And the walls are big with them.